For black students studying at one of the most prestigious universities in the world, academic pressure isn't always the only challenge. For some, it can feel like entering a new world. You feel like you have to be strong, you know? My mum keeps saying to me, just keep fighting. Just keep going, just get that degree. Over the years, Oxford and Cambridge universities have come under pressure for their lack of ethnic diversity. I think it's a place where race has not been acknowledged as relevant, particularly to the whole intellectual experience of being at Cambridge. Last year at Cambridge, the numbers improved on previous years, with the university accepting a record number of 91 black British undergraduates. But beyond numbers is the experience. I'm Ashley John-Baptiste, a BBC reporter, but also a Cambridge graduate myself. And whilst I'm so glad I studied there, as a mixed-race South Londoner who grew up in care, it felt worlds apart from what I was used to. And nearly 10 years on from my own time, I want to find out what life at Cambridge has been like for a new wave of black British freshers. The data is stark. Black British undergraduates have never made up more than 3% of Cambridge's undergraduate population. This doesn't include international students who roughly make up a quarter of all undergraduates. Steps have been made to improve things. In 2018, the university launched the Stormzy Scholarship to fund a selected number of black freshers. But I know firsthand that once you enter Cambridge, it's not uncommon to feel out of place. And as much as the university did offer support, I often felt like an imposter and totally out of my depth. It's because of my own experience that I really want to know how current black students are coping in a space that is still predominantly white and privileged. And to give us that insight, meet Fabiana, Success, and Sharon. Success is from Manchester and studying medicine. For his Nigerian parents, seeing their son study at Cambridge is nothing less than a dream come true. Back home in Africa, uh, when they want to maybe make fun of you, if you are studying so much, yeah. they will ask you, yeah. why are you studying so much? Are you going to Cambridge? It's a big thing for us. Success is enjoying university a few weeks in but he was a bit concerned about finding a barber in Cambridge who could cut Afro hair. Success, why has it taken you so long to get a haircut in oh, Cambridge? Oh man. When I looked in the mirror one day and saw this mess, <laughs> I didn't really know where to go. A few weeks into Cambridge, how's it going? Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> it's stressful. It has been good. Like I have found, I found people that, that are quite like me. Um, I found people who are very different to me and we get on and it's, yeah, it's just been a really good experience. When I heard about Cambridge and Oxford and all that kind of stuff, like this is the place that I've, I've wanted to go to. Love that. Sharon from Tottenham is studying history and Spanish. Her family of Eritrean origin have come to visit. Growing up, we like Cambridge always was seen as something so like unattainable, but it was always like a goal for you. You always wanted to go to Cambridge. I feel like Cambridge is very welcoming. It's that representing for Eritrea, there's not that many Eritreans that go to Cambridge. I came just this short time in this country, and I never dream it that it's my daughter or to go to Cambridge. But it just this is the dream. Thank you, Sharon, it make me proud as a mom. I think you do get a sense that you, you are different. It, it doesn't feel bad, but it just is something that you do have to kind of just think about, just be like, you know, mm -hmm. if you enter certain like classes, you might be the only person of colour there. You might be the only black face there. You might be the only one with your hair there. Or, do you know what I mean? Like Your hair? Yeah. What do you mean by that? <laughs> like, you know, my big like curly hair. Afro. Or like, yeah, like some of my friends have said, like they've um, changed hairstyles and like people don't recognise who they are. Academically, it's definitely lived up to its name. But what I was surprised about is how I've been eased into it in a way. Fabiana is from Coventry, where she lives with her Jamaican mum. She's studying psychology and behavioural sciences. You know where you're going, so you had to play the part. It don't work overnight, just get up and say, I'm going to be posh. You've been working towards this. 
you're not a follower, you're a leader. I'm a leader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are. Just a few weeks in, Fabiana says she encountered racial discrimination from another student at a social event. The incident involved the use of a racial slur. This boy just said like a really ignorant comment. He just said, I'm too drunk to say the M word. So that was something that like threw me off because I've never really experienced someone like outwardly saying something like that to me. Like I've never been called the M word or anything like that. What went through your head? It was mainly just like shock. Like I didn't, I couldn't say anything. Like everyone was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he just said that. No one really spoke up apart from me and my black friend. You're definitely like, I'm black at Cambridge. She decided not to report the issue, but confronted the student privately, who she says later apologised. It's not too long after her own encounter that Fabiana hears of another black student who alleges they've been discriminated against. According to the student, the incident involved a staff member from Trinity College, which is one of the colleges of Cambridge University. I was on the train, one of my feet was on the seat. Mm -hmm. A man from Trinity College looked at me in disgust and just said, <laughs> verbally assaulting me on the train. Yeah. I think to myself, would I have been spoken like that if I was a white man? Yeah. It really grates me that I'm getting emotional about it. Yeah. Because you feel like you have to be strong. My mum keeps saying to me, just keep fighting. <laughs> she, she's saying, do you want to drop out? Do you want to leave? I'm fighting for every other black person who I know needs to occupy these spaces. The university has taken steps to improve its diversity, but it's clear that some black students still struggle. I took the guys to share their concerns with the university's vice chancellor. A lot of black students feel like when they get here, they don't really feel like a part of the university, like instances where we just feel like outcasts. What mechanisms does the university have for issues that black students experience? So the first step is creating a critical mass of, of uh, BAME students, black students in particular, so that people never feel alone. One of the things that we've done is uh, committed to a three-year program of increasing dialogue around issues of race. Do you think this is a place that is institutionally racist? I think it's a place where race has not been acknowledged as relevant, particularly to the whole uh, intellectual experience of being at Cambridge. So in that sense, I would say it is racist because it doesn't acknowledge race in people's lives. Despite challenges, the university's African Caribbean Society, also known as the ACS, has been a lifeline for the students. It's a group that celebrates African and Caribbean culture, and tonight, the students are attending a special dinner. When else in Cambridge's history would you get a room full of you know, black minority ethnic students and like, we're all just here existing and thriving. It's just such a beautiful symbol of how far we've come, and I'm so excited to be able to put this on. It was just over halfway through the academic year that the national lockdown was announced as a result of the coronavirus. The university closed. Students sent home. Lectures were moved online. It marked the end of their student experience as they knew it. This whole coronavirus thing has just been getting on my nerves. I feel like it's stressing everyone out. There's nothing to look forward to because summer's basically locked off now. It's been four weeks, I think, since I was back at home. What the heck has gone on with my hair? Exams are in September now. And whilst dealing with lockdown, Black Lives Matter protests broke out across the UK in the summer following the death of George Floyd in the US. 
my mental health is not in the best shape. I'm sure every black person in Cambridge has a story to share about some sort of covert racism. It's kind of hard being away from Cambridge and not having that support system. So yeah, it makes me miss Cambridge a lot. Uni's almost done. I've literally got like one assessment left to do. Then I've finished first year. Okay, <laughs> I've just come off the phone. Um, I've just had my director of studies meeting. So kind of like my parents evening without my parent. And I got my exam results. I Somehow I managed to bag a first in both history and in Spanish. And then when she told me, I was just like, I, I just, I don't know how, especially in this term, because it's just been like, it's been disgracefully hard. <laughs> like, and I don't think I've actually had time to just kind of process this year properly and just sit down and like, I don't know. A lot of it was kind of filled with kind of fear and like, obviously the whole, you know, imposter syndrome and feeling like, uh, do you really belong here? Like, are you really the type of person they're looking for? Were you just kind of, you know, with a bit of like a pity acceptance? Like there's all those kind of things that rush into your mind and then just kind of come out on the other side. I don't know, it's actually a miracle and if this is what I can achieve in my first year, best believe. Mm -mm. It's been so long since I've seen the students, so long that a whole term has passed. I catch up with them to find out how, despite everything that's happened, they feel their first year has panned out. I always say that I've never felt as black as I have here in Cambridge. <laughs> I mean, like, like in Coventry, there's a lot of black people around, there's Asian people around me, like it's very diverse, but here it's not diverse. You're very aware that you are black. There's no practicality. If there's nothing that you apply, you know, to make black students feel more, you know, safe and more accepted in this, in this community, then at the end of the day, you know, you can't say we've made progress. We've tidied our hair, we've spoken the way that we need to speak, we've silenced this elements of our culture, we've done this to accommodate in these spaces and still that's not enough. Your environment can make things difficult for you but it's not a barrier. You can overcome whatever you want to overcome and be who you need to be. It might just be a little bit more difficult but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Thank you.